Typically with an acute concussion injury, and what I mean by acute is in that first 10 to 14 day initial mark. Injuries just happen, it's acute. We used to tell people to rest. Berlin, in the most recent consensus statement, which was actually the meeting was held in 2016, publication came out in 2017, um, the, the whole thing was they, they eliminated rest and they moved that to symptom limited activity. You are now able to do something or anything that did not provoke your symptoms to a significant degree. So that was a big change that happened in Berlin. Now still, we started learning that exercise, and this made it into the consensus statement too, that exercise done in a specific way. So meaning that if you do a treadmill test and you establish what the physiologic capacity is, what the blood flow capacity is, and put somebody on a sub-symptom threshold exercise program, that that was beneficial. That's beneficial in the PCS or post-concussion syndrome type phases. So they were still looking at this as a treatment for persistent concussion symptoms, okay? So that's kind of where we were at. That's the history lesson is that Berlin changed from rest to symptom limited activity, but exercise still wasn't recommended for at least a few weeks out for more persistent type symptoms because that's where the state of the literature was. In terms of return to learn and return to play, each stage of the process had to be separated by at least 24 hours and you had to be asymptomatic at stage X in order to move on to the next stage. So if you're on stage two, you had to be asymptomatic at stage two in order to move on to stage three and so on and so on and so on. If you got symptoms at any one of those stages, you had to drop back to the previous stage for at least 24 hours or until your symptoms went away and then you could tr attempt the next stage again. Okay, so this is kind of where we are. This is the current, this is the current landscape. What I'm talking about. Um, there was also a paper that was done that kind of informed the Berlin consensus from Davis. Now, this paper was meant mostly for kids. It was talking about the differences between children and, and adults for concussion management. And what they stated was that return to learn should be completed before return to play is initiated. So. Generally, and what we did with it is we took acute return to learn and then we put it in front of return to play. So return to learn is a four-step process. Return to play is a six-step process. We essentially made a 10-step process because you had to be done and through return to learn before you could initiate return to play. And you had to be asymptomatic through the entire process. Now, how have things changed? Where are we getting to now? What we're learning now is that exercise, although initially was researched and brought into the concussion picture as a treatment for persistent concussion symptoms, what we've now learned and what we're continuing to learn is that exercise, when done in the appropriate way with appropriate testing in place and following a sub-symptom threshold exercise protocol, is beneficial to recovery, it actually speeds the recovery and reduces the chances that you'll have persistent concussion symptoms. And this has been done, so it initially started with a couple research studies that were more observational. So for you non-science people, an observational study is typically when you just look at a group of people, see what they do, and see what the outcomes might be. The problem with this is that people will self-select what they want to do. So what, they, what these observational studies found is that those that exercised earlier in the recovery process were less likely to have persistent concussion symptoms and were more likely to have a faster recovery than those who didn't start exercising in the first seven days, okay? Now, like I said, the problem with that is people self-select. So maybe the people that exercise in the first seven days had a less severe injury to begin with, which is why they were more likely to want to go exercise because they were already on the road to recovery and they exercised and they were, they were gonna get better faster anyway and they self-selected exercise. So that, those aren't really good studies but it's interesting to observe and say, huh, maybe there's something here. Just recently there was the first randomized control trial where they actually take a group of people, put them on the treadmill and they fail the treadmill test, they have an increase in symptoms at a certain threshold, they then split the group in half 
Half of them were given a sub-symptom threshold exercise protocol. The other half, and this study is by John Letty for those that are interested, the other half was given a placebo stretching protocol. So they, they came in, they had the same number of treatment visits, and this group was exercising, this group was just going through a stretching protocol. So their heart rate remained very low, and so on and so on. The group that was given exercise recovered significantly faster than the group that was given stretching and they were significantly less likely to have persistent concussion symptoms. So now we have a better quality study that shows the same thing. The average duration from the time of injury to the initial treatment visit where they did the treadmill test and started the exercise protocol was four days. And they found that starting that exercise protocol at that four day mark was more beneficial than if you didn't exercise at that four day mark. So now what does this do to our acute management algorithm and what we're taught to do, which is rest and don't do anything or symptom limited activity, then light cognitive, then school half days, then school full days, then you can start exercising provided you're asymptomatic, then you can start going to practice and all this stuff. Well, by the time you get there, you might already be at day 10 or day 15 by the time you get through the return to learn and all your symptoms are gone. But now, because you're not exercising until then, you're potentially delaying recovery and not having an optimal chance for a better outcome.